Hey, what's up you guys? This is Claire from Pen Entertainment. I'm super excited to talk to you today about one of my favorite franchises of all time, Star Trek. Star Trek Picard, the new series that's going to be airing in January on CBS All Access, aired a second trailer at New York Comic Con um, this past weekend. People are super excited about it. Uh, this is coming to about a couple months after the first trailer that was released at San Diego Comic-Con uh, that really fed you a lot of nostalgic but also just impactful, intriguing. There's so much that's new and mysterious, uh, so many elements. Uh, for fans and non-fans to just engage with so it's really it's really really exciting to see how people are picking apart all the details of, of both trailers coming up with their theories I'm gonna talk about some of my own and some of the things that I found were really really exciting and really really important um, for both of these trailers because I mean I there's so much lore in the Star Trek universe, there's just so, so much, and that's one of the reasons why I love it so much, is because you don't, none of these stories are flat. I mean, with the exception of maybe, you know, a handful of characters, but for the most part, the exploration of the universe, of the races, of the cultures, the is going to be no different if if not better because we have better graphics nowadays and you get to see old man Picard having a you know late life crisis in uh what like eight like 4k 1080p retina display like it'll be beautiful um so I love Patrick Stewart. I am so glad he went through with this project. He originally had stated that this was going to be some kind of alternate universe, uh, alternate timeline show where what would what would ha have happened if Picard had never joined Starfleet. I'm so glad they're not doing that, even though I would have watched it anyways because, duh, Picard. Um, but they're now it's going to be a direct continuation of TNG timeline. Um, and you see him on his vineyard, right? He's having his his late life crisis. He doesn't know. He doesn't feel at home. Uh, just being domestic, staying on the ground. I, he does. He deserves to be back on a ship. He needs to be back on a ship. And it's really sad seeing him um, go back to Starfleet headquarters, uh, Starfleet command, and essentially being shut down. Um, when he comes to them with a problem, and that problem is, this girl showed up. This random girl showed up and asks him for help, and we don't know who she is, we don't know what her backstory is, only that she's being hunted, that she's being chased through space and time, and we have to figure out what that struggle is going to be, or at least speculate as much as we can until January. Um, but all signs point to the fact that she is somehow involved with the Borg, maybe a former drone, uh, maybe de-assimilated and then sent to Earth uh, to, you know, enact some kind of event. Um, because at the end of the San Diego Comic Con trailer, it shows a Romulan, uh, I guess, who had been chasing her, who presumably had been chasing her, hunting her down, or trying to stop her in some sense, basically saying that she's the destroyer. So, what she's going to destroy, we don't know yet. Um, but Picard, obviously, someone's in help, like someone's in need of help. You know, he's probably got nothing better to do at this point. Obviously, he's going to jump on this mission, and nobody can stop him, not even himself. Um, and beyond that, the new characters' involvement with the Borg and with this whole situation that we don't really know that much about yet, uh, there are seven of nine. God, I when I saw Jerry Ryan on the screen, I screamed. I actually screamed and almost knocked my chair over because I. So with Seven of Nine's involvement, you know there's stuff with the Borg, you know she's going to be really, really pivotal in that conversation of what happens to somebody who used to be um, in the collective, 
what happens to somebody who's been deassimilated? What happens, I mean, to just cyborgs, uh, humans with cybernetic implants, AIs, uh, androids, and we'll get to that in a second. But what happens to those? What happens to those people? What happens to them um, when they either leave the collective or, uh, you know? What's the fallout? Because she's she's she ended up being able to join Starfleet. She ended up being able to rise in the ranks. So you know what what really what has changed about societal sentiment towards these uh, towards these people? So androids, uh, our favorite android, Data, uh, features really really heavily in both trailers. And depending on what you believe that is canon in the Star Trek universe. Data could be in a couple of different states, right? He could be totally deceased um, because he sacrificed himself for Picard in Star Trek Nemesis, uh, which was mentioned in the San Diego uh, trailer. So, you know, that was obviously a really pivotal, it was a, it was a huge moment for Picard, something that he really never got over. So to see Data in some form coming back is going to be an interesting conversation because what really happened? Did he manage to transfer himself fully into B4? Did he, you know, did some, was some form of himself preserved somehow? Or is, is it a possibility of it being, of lore being in the new series and not data? So, I mean, I, I would probably put money on it being data or B4, some form of data and having a big comeback because in the San Diego trailer it shows Data or B4 in a couple of different pieces in uh, some scientist lab. This scientist is joining presumably the crew. Uh, she said that this was her life's work. I'm guessing maybe the reconstruction of Data is, li is her life's work. Um, so she's and she's joining. She's going to be joining Picard. So. Whenever he comes back, however he comes back, it's going to be a really, really gratifying scene for fans. The the trope of uh, a machine or an android being the one to show people or humans really how to be human or what does it, you know, answering the question of what does it mean to be human has been overused, but I think I, Data was one of the first. Data was definitely one of the first who brought that question into the light, and I, I can't wait for him for them to fully explore that theme because I really think that's going to be featured heavily in this new series. And Picard himself has had previously been assimilated, so he knows what it's like to not be a completely organic entity. So that's his fight. He knows. I mean, that's something that he cares deeply about, and there are so many nods um, in both trailers to that theme and to, um, you know. To the relationship between Picard and Data, that that's just it's going to be a focal point. I guarantee it's going to be a focal point. Uh, adding Seven of Nine in there, just like it dub. I mean, it double. It just it doubly reinforces it. And okay, okay. And let's talk about the Romulans, right? Uh, we know the Romulans are after this girl, this new character. We know that they think that she's some sort of destroyer or bad person, so maybe they'll be... Uh, I don't think they're gonna be the big bad, though. I think there's gonna be something else. I think there has to be something else to be the big bad. Um, there's... There's just... There's, there's so much to process. Um, I feel like I can't even hit every single point I want to get to in one video, but I'm really, really excited for this and I hope you are too. So let me know what you guys think in the comments. Tell me if you're watching this. Tell me if you've seen the trailers. What what kind of little details did you figure out? Uh, have you read any other fan theories? Let me know and I hope you'll tune in when I do review this in January because I'm 100% reviewing this. This is going to be one of, I think, the most exciting series uh, to for 2000 for 2020 i think it's going to be one of the best series for 2020 so let me know what you think and we'll see you next time follow our youtube channel to watch our featured videos and original shows see you there